So many years ago, uh, when I was in grad school, we got to tour the NASA training facility for astronauts down at the Johnson Space Center in uh, uh, south of Houston. Uh, I was going to school in Central Texas, and so it was a couple of hours drive. And you know, for folks in an education department in grad school, let's go see how they train the astronauts. You know, how awesome is that? And it was incredible. The facilities they had were beyond state of the art, beyond world class. They had the world's largest swimming pool, I don't know, a couple million gallons, where you could simulate being weightless in a spacesuit and assembling the components of the space station. Um, they had a full motion simulators for the space shuttle. They had an airplane, a jet airplane, a Gulfstream business jet configured to fly like the space shuttle. One half of the cockpit was a regular um, uh, airplane cockpit. The other half was totally tricked out just like the space shuttle and that was where the aircraft commander sat and then they would pull a lever and the airplane would turn from an airplane into a brick with wings. The, the landing gear would go down, the flaps would go down, the thrust reversers would deploy and the thing would just sink like a rock just like the real space shuttle. But you could push the lever forward and all that stuff would fold back up and then you had power and you could go around if you messed up the approach. Because on a real space shuttle, you can't go around. You got one shot at it and, and then you're done. So they used that to train the astronauts to land the space shuttle, right? They come in from orbit, 17,000 miles an hour, and they got one shot at the runway. That was a pretty impressive simulator. <clears throat> and then they had this, this big nose of, of the, the, the shuttle, and it would lift up uh, like in launch position, and they would practice getting in and getting into their seats and strapping in. And then they would lower it back down, and they would practice getting out so they could get in and get out of the space shuttle. So they would practice that part of the task. And part task simulations are really, really important. And NASA did a whole lot of that. So then <clears throat> they also had for the the, uh, the guys that operate the the robot arm that would like launch the the satellites and lift them up out of the out of the cargo bay and put them up and, and get them going or lift up pieces of the space station and lift them up and, and, and put them in place with the rest of the space station um, they had this big gigantic room and it was totally blacked out with black curtains everywhere so it looked like space right and a, a full-size mock-up of the, the shuttle cargo bay, you know, the, this thing the size of a bus, you could park a bus in it, and, and a robot arm, and helium balloons, ginormous helium balloons the size of space station components or satellites or what have you, the Hubble Space Telescope, that they would reach up and they would grab, and of course they're helium balloons, so they have no weight on Earth, essentially, and so they'd practice maneuvering these things around. These huge, fantastically complicated, fantastically expensive simulations simulators in order to practice these tasks. But the most impressive simulator we saw was four cafeteria chairs with a piece of plywood leaned up against two of them and the other two facing the other way. So there were two facing this way and two facing that way. And the piece of plywood up against two of them and stapled to the plywood was a computer printout of the, the, the control panel for the particular mission that they were going to fly. And the astronauts would sit there in these orange plastic cafeteria chairs with their checklists. And they'd go through the checklist and reach out and touch and reach out and touch and reach out and touch the various controls and practice going through the checklists. <clears throat> and that simulator didn't cost millions of dollars to develop, but it had a great deal of cognitive fidelity. And that's what we're talking about.